Hi guys and welcome back to our FIFA 21 Sunderland Road to Glory career mode. So in the last episode we of course started our second season in this series in the Championship after of course getting promoted from League One. We made several signings before going into the first game of the season where we played Chef Wednesday and it was absolute insanity. We come away with a 5-0 win which was, it really was crazy. We literally had five chances, scored every single one and it was absolute dreamland. I really can't imagine that kind of performance happened again. It's just crazy that it happened on the first game of the season. So, of course, we are now uh, top of the league. Only a game has been played, of course, but it's still nice to have a look at it, isn't it? But in this episode, we do have Millwall twice. We are going to play the first game away from home against Millwall. We will do a quick sim for the cup game because in this series, generally, I'm not really particularly bothered about cup competitions unless we do simulate three when we get onto the sort of latter stages of them. Uh, then we'll play them. But other than that, I'm not really bothered. Particularly in this season, I'm more focuses, sorry, focusing on us staying in the championship or at least solidifying our place in the championship but then we'll watch the game at the stadium light against uh against brighton and if we need to i will of course jump in now something has happened just off camera there because again i read your comments and i've have read through your comments from the last episode and uh, because we did end up selling both remy matthews and burge a good shout again which i keep forgetting about free agents i uh, got pushed in the direction of looking at free agents for a second string goalkeeper we do have a young lad but he's rated like 56 um, so I have signed a free agent. There was a couple of goalkeepers I was looking at. There was one lad who was about 28, 29, um, who was rated similarly to the goalkeeper who I've actually brought in who was 21. And I will show you now the goalkeeper who I have actually brought in. And it is this lad here, Diego Altuve. He's 21 years of age, which kind of fits the bill with the rhythm of how we've been going with our transfers. They are all relatively young players. He's rated 65. I've looked him up, but apparently he was at the third, fourth choice at Real Madrid. So I thought I wasn't going to go for him origin originally because I thought that his wages wouldn't be just far too high. But he's happy with 2.1k, which is really, really good. So we have a backup goalkeeper in place. So thanks for that suggestion. Now, something else, which of course we we're talking about, is a central midfielder. Now, we could go for this lad here, Fabian Enriquez, who's currently a free agent, 26 years of age. Uh, he does fit the bill in terms of an aggressive de uh, defensive midfielder, which I kind of do want. Not necessarily defensive, but more of a sort of battler next to Bryce. Because Bryce, although we can, he makes good interceptions and uh, and he does do sort of decent defensive work, he's more of an attacking, creative central midfielder. So I want someone next to him who's just a big brick shit house who can uh, who can win balls and a big lad as well. Fabian Enriquez, I've looked him up and he's rated around 67, 68, which isn't terrible, but um, it still isn't... Fantastic. Of course, there's Graven Birch, who I've looked at, but uh, it, I don't know whether that's quite realistic at this point because he is very highly rated over in Ajax. I've tried to go for a loan and it won't allow me to do it, and I would have to spend a, a good, decent amount. You're looking at about £5 million if I'm going to buy him. But then there was this lad that actually was in one of the comments a good two or three episodes ago who I didn't really properly take notice of, and it's, his name is uh, Ibrahima Sissoko. Uh, central midfielder, six foot four, which is brilliant. Is weak foot four star. I've looked up his stats. Very, very aggressive. Very strong. He isn't the quickest, which is kind of what you'd expect. But he has very good passing ability. Uh, tackling is fantastic. So just a big lad next to someone like Bryce in the middle. I think that's ideal. And if I have looked it up correctly, he should by now, a season gone, he should be maybe around 70, 71. He's only 23. We are probably going to be looking at around four million, three, four million. Uh, to get him so that is kind of what we're working towards we need to sell some players uh, Brad Smith is on the transfer list there's a couple of youngsters that are on, are on the transfer list as well uh, so we might be able to raise some funds to add to the 686k we currently have so he's the kind of player I am looking at in all honesty in this episode also by the way some of the players have got player faces now since the last update it seems as though a few players that didn't have player faces now do and they have updated ones as well They've got, like O'Neill and Dobson you can see they've got the new kits on and uh, players like Maguire, uh, Diamond finally has a uh, player picture as well, which is which is really nice. Uh, but of course, it's a bit too late now. We've already got to the point where we're past using these players. So unfortunately, you know, I probably would have used Diamond if he did have this earlier earlier on in the series, because it is a big thing for me. But I think you know it's a little bit too late now, isn't it? A little too late. But we do have a transfer offer immediately for Perea, a player who we have brought through the youth academy. He was sort of relatively highly rated, 62, 18 years of age, uh, 650k, uh, considering he's only worth between 400 and 580, that's a very good offer, so I'm going to accept that straight off the bat, and maybe, off, you know, I might have been able to get an extra 100k or so, but I'm quite happy with that, get him off the books, we are trying to trim this squad down a little bit as well, 
But I really do want that central midfielder. I really want someone who's really strong and powerful in the centre alongside Bryce. Because Bryce is someone who he will get into his 70s after a few months. I'm almost certain of it. But now we do have an offer for Patterson, which, again, <laughs> it's working out perfectly. Uh, 270k is worth anywhere between 165 and 240. So, again, it's a really good offer. What a good start to this episode this is. Hopefully those two deals do go through. It'll just make my life a lot easier when trying to sort these squads out. But now we do have an offer for Enrique Mora, but it's a loan deal uh, with an option to buy, which I don't really want to entertain, to be honest with you, because he's probably going to improve throughout the season, even if we don't use him, and it'll be worth more, and we'll end up underselling him massively. So I'm not really going to entertain that one. But there is confirmation that both Perea and Patterson have both been sold. 475k we'll get for Perea and 190 from Patterson. So that's a decent little bit of money added to our budget. And on top of that, we've just received an offer uh, for Brad Smith, as well, which is absolutely ideal. Uh, we could get anywhere between 900k and 1.3. I'm going to try and get a bit more. I might say like 1.5, something like that. Uh, see if we can get that one done. What the hell? The managers are both wearing football kits. They're both sat there in shorts. And a football top. Oh, EA. Stop trying to fix this shit. You can't do it. You just can't fix anything. <laughs> this is terrible. This is absolutely terrible. 1.5 million. Oh, my God. Are they happy with 1.5? We'll see. 1.5. Go on, please, lads. 1.3. All right, okay, we'll go to 1.4. See if uh, they'll take that. Then I'll be happy with that. 1.4 million. Take Brad Smith off. Our oh, hands. There we go. They've accepted it. <laughs> oh, they just don't fail to surprise me. They just... Yeah, yeah, just brilliant at being shit. So now we have 1.3 million in the transfer budget. I still don't think that will be enough to pick up Sissoko. So I'll, I'll hold off just a little bit. Uh, but for now, we are going to go into our second game of the season away from home to take on Millwall, who currently 16th. I think they may have lost their first game of the season. So this is the side we're going to go with against Millwall away from home. Pretty much unchanged from the absolute demolition of Chef Wednesday in the last episode. So we have Van der Voort, Hume, Adrabayo, Willis, Onayan, Dembele, Dobson, Bryce, Madweke, French and Jones up top. Let's get into it. And here we are. It is absolutely pouring it down away from home against Millwall. I really can't see this being a similar scoreline to the last episode where we did open the season with a 5-0 win over Sheffield Wednesday. But Ricky J. Jones did score a hat-trick in that game. Hopefully he can keep up that run of form in this game and get ourselves another three points. Hopefully anyway. We shall see. Put a ball over the top here. Can Denver get there? Yes, he can. And that should be our throwing. Good defending. Well played, Denver. Oh, no, that's a good ball, though. Inside to his man. Come on, Dobson. He's been beaten too easily there, and it's a save from the new man, Van der Voort, between the sticks. Oh, this is good football now from Millwall. Oh, come on. Hold him up. Hold him. Well played, Luke. Well played, son. Cut it inside if you can. Neatly done. Now it's Dobson. He's going to drive us forward, hopefully, anyway. Here is Isaac French. Or Frenchy as we know him. Here is French. Can he quit inside? Yes, he can. With his stronger left foot, it's been blocked. Back across goal and he is offside. Such a scrappy game so far. Not quite as open as the Chef Wednesday game. It's a hoof ball over the top. I think might actually find his man. Get the first header by a well played son. Now can we break ourselves now? It is Bryce. That's beautiful play from Tony Bryce. Help him out. Try and find Ricky J. Jones. Can he get it across goal? He does try to and it's a poor cross. Straight to the keeper. Bennett. Oh no, it's good play there from Bennett. Get onto him, Welling. Great challenge. It is a corner. Oh god, this is scary now. It's Bennett to take. Get this away, lads. Please get this away. Get there first. Well in, Bryce. But it is going to be another Millwall corner. See what I mean? This is completely different to the previous game in the last episode. Whipped in towards the near post. Well in. Now here's French on the counter attack. Can he find his man? He does find Madweke. Come on, son. Big touch. Keep going. Keep going, help him out. Get it across goal if anyone can be asked. Get in there. It's French. It's in. It's right on the stroke of half time. And it's Frenchy who gets his first goal of the campaign. Get in. It's his first goal of the campaign. It's our first counter attack of dreams of the campaign. I'm so glad he managed to get there. I thought that was going to go straight to the defender. But no, he's managed to flick it on. Pass the keeper to get his first goal of the season. Get in. The last sort of 15, 20 minutes have been mainly uh, held by Millwall. Really peppering. Our box putting crosses in. We've been dealing with everything. But on the counter attack, we've managed to go into the half time interval. A goal to the good. Oh no, that is a bad piece of defended by Denver Hume. Out wide for Romeo again, but he is offside. God, luck really is on our side at the minute. Bryce plays it into 
Ricky J. Jones onto French. Can he turn his money? Yes, he can. It is French. Still French. Keep going, son. Keep going. Hold on to it if you can. Still French. Flick it backwards. Yes, he can. It is Madweke. Can he get his goal for the club? No, he can't. It's been blocked. And why the hell is our manager wearing a Sunderland kit? Oh, my God. This looks terrible. It's really doing my nut in that. My OCD is going through the roof. I just realised our manager is currently on the sidelines in a Sutherland kit with the luminous numbers on the back. The what the hell? Now we are going to make a couple of subs. Grig is going to make his first appearance of the season. He does deserve it after his absolutely insanely good season in League One. And Gooch is going to come on as well uh, to replace Madweke. Dobson to take this corner though. He does whip it in. Can we get ahead on it? No, we can't. Help him out. Flicks on neatly for Denver Hume. Can he get it across goal? He does get it in towards his man. Surely French has been blocked. Still in the box and... They've managed to get it away. We should be doubling our lead there. Oh, no. But they are breaking forward straight away from that. It's Smith driving straight down the middle. Get into him, please. Get into him. Get into him. Surely that's offside. It is. Thank God. Now we have Smith on the edge of the box. Get over to, get over to him. Well played. Now get it out. Get it out. Get it out. That will do. That will do. Go on, Linden. On your back, son. He does play it to Linden. Gooch, can he cut inside? Yes, he can. It is still good. Try and find French. And again, flips off for Will Grigg. Can he get his first goal in the championship? Yes, he can. It's 2-0. And that should be the game. Sealed. Get in. It's another counter-attack. And it shows that Will Grigg can do it in this division. It is a lovely finish. Keep an old chance. It's thumped past him into the bottom right-hand side of the goal. Get in, son. What a start this has been for us this season. Mahoney is going to be taking the corner here for Millwall. So get you in it. Get you in it, someone that's still in the box. Get it away. That's been struck and it's gone way over the bar. The full time whistle should be going any moment now. You would think, there we go. It's our second win in as many games. It was really hard for, but we do deserve that win 100%. 2 0. And there's our manager. Look at him. <laughs> our player manager. Oh, this is shit. This is so shit. And after that game, there is confirmation that Brad Smith will be leaving us to play. In Brazil, I believe uh, that's where that is. I'm not going to try and pronounce it. 1.4 million, of course, but only a million will be allocated to our transfer budget, which leaves us with 2.38 million. I mean, I suppose I can try and have a look, have a look at Sissoko now uh, and see what we can do. I don't know whether you guys agree with me going for Sissoko, but I just think because he's such a big lad, he, he can win those headers when uh, goal kicks are taken. Because a lot of the time, because Bryce isn't very big, Dobson isn't the biggest either, we lose out in those uh, midfield battles, particularly with second balls, and someone like Sissoko is just absolutely ideal. So I might see if we can try something now to try and figure out about how much they would like anyway. And if they have to throw a youngster in, then they have to throw a youngster in. But there we go. I've turned from my manager, who was in a full kit on the sidelines in the last game, to an old bald man in a different kit. It's just... You just can't write this stuff. Right, okay, we end up and talked for literally like 10 minutes, guys. And it was just ridiculous. They'd offer one thing, then we'd offer another, but then they'd go higher than the previous offer. But eventually it's come to the point where he's walked away and said that he'll think about it. So I don't know how that's going to go. They're probably going to come back with a ridiculous amount. But we were very, very close. It was literally a case of a few thousand that we needed um, for the wages. But of course, um, I can't accept something if we have nothing in the wages for him in the wage budget. But now we are going to be going into the Carabao Cup. I'm going to quick sim this game against Millwall again. But this time we will be using our reserve side. I mean, I'm going to quick sim it. As you can see, there's... Plenty of players there that needed a bit of game time. So we'll quick sim this game. Hopefully they uh, get a win. Mainly for confidence because I don't really care about the Carabao Cup. Do they get a win? Come on. Come on. Give us a win. And we lose one nil. It's an early-ish goal from Bradshaw that knocks us out of the uh, of the Carabao Cup. Now they have come back, uh, the agent of Ibrahim Sissoko. 2.95 million they want, which we don't have. Because if you have a look, uh, if we negotiate it, uh, we pretty much don't have that, or if we do, it leaves us with nothing in the wage budget. I feel like we're just going to keep repeating ourselves here until we make an extra few quid. As you can see, transfer budget is in the minuses now. So if we pro sorry, propose a new transfer fee, uh, we'll go for that, even though I don't even think that's going to be enough for his wages. Um, 2.5. Uh, we'll try that. 2.5. What will they say to that? No, it's they're stuck on 2.95. I don't think we're going to get anywhere in this episode until we make a little bit more money. Uh, 2.6. Um, see what they say to that. Come on, just accept something. No, they're not going to have it. We're not going to be able to do this. We're going to have to end the negotiation. We're going backwards and forwards with him. They're going in circles, to be honest with you. And we just don't have enough money to pay just yet. But as I say, we're so agonisingly close 
to getting him. We just need someone else off the books. If someone comes in for the likes of Diamond or uh, there's Charlie Nash, who's one of the young lads who come through, who's also on the transfer list, to add that little bit more for our wage budget, really, we'd be able to bring him in and then that would be us done really, for, um, uh, for for our transfers anyway. But now we are, of course, going to be watching this game as we do take on Brighton. We're going to go unchanged again because we are undefeated in the league. And if needs be, of course, we will jump in. And away we go. Can we make it three wins from three? Brighton, probably one of the best sides in the championship, of course, with some very, very good players. I'd be quite happy with a draw, to be honest with you. Oh, no, they have got the ball down the right side into the number 10. Good chance. It's been blocked by Jordan Willis. And we managed to get it away. Now here is Medweke. Good chance now it's for Bryce. And again for Ricky J. Jones. It's been taken away. But back to Medweke. And it's been nicked off him. And they're going to get this one cleared away it looks like. Good chance now for Bryce. And turned and it's a goal. It's 1-0. McAllister who gets it. It's been end-to-end -end stuff since the beginning of this game. But we have conceded our first goal of the season. Now oh, they're breaking forward again. Good chance pulled back. Surely now it's a save. And I thought that may have trickled over the line, but it's gone out for a goal kick. I think I might jump in at half time here because we're just giving a ball away over and over again. And it's a save at the near post by Van der Voort. We have a corner to defend though. Whipped in, get it away, that'll do. Ball over the top, a cross goal and it's been intercepted. What a chance that was. But there goes the half time whistle. I'm definitely jumping in. Look at this. 37% possession. They've had six shots to our none. Uh, I'm definitely jumping in. <laughs> and away we go. Can we manage to claw anything back from this game? Of course, Brighton, like I mentioned earlier, one of the better sides in this league. So it is going to be difficult. We have 45 minutes to try and get a point here. At least that's my aim. It's really good football. Get it out wide for Dembele. Come on, let's break here. Still, Dembele. Can he get it across? He can to French. He knocks it on for Ricky J. Jones and he can't get there. It's really good football. But he just didn't have that final touch the end product that we really needed and donate now get over to him oh that's really nice play from the opposition tried to slide in to block it is it going to be another it is it's 2-0 to brighton and we're going to have to expect this we're not going to win them all in this league but that felt almost impossible to defend against really good play from brighton look how we just turned his man really easily there we missed the side and challenge and it's a lovely finish 2-0 Good chance now, and it is proper now. Go over to him. Oh, dived in again far too easily, and he's hit the post. It's a good chance again. Powered away. Oh, we're getting absolutely demolished here, you know. Absolutely demolished. Come on, get into him, get into him. That's so soft, that defending. Come on, stop messing around with it. Get it away. Now oh, here's Bryce. Onto his man. Can he flick it towards? Oh, he's trying to get it towards Ricky J. Jones, but the pass was awful. Definitely not quite where I wanted the ball to go. But it has been intercepted. Basuma now onto Morpé. Good chance. Oh, come on, get it off him, get it off him. What? what? That felt so scripted. Why didn't Madweke go for the ball then? He's purposely left it, so it's gone for the Brighton player. They are breaking forward. It has been struck and it's a save, but did you see that? That was so simple for Madweke to get. But he's purposely ignored the ball so the Brighton player could get it. That was ridiculous. I am going to bring on Sims and Gooch for the final 10 minutes of the game. Pretty much for simply game time at this point because I can't see who's getting back into this. We've managed to get into, or sorry, barely managed to get into the Brighton half even since we jumped in. But that's a lovely play there by Sir Ricky Dembele. What is that run there? Yes, there we are. It is. Dobson, can he flick it back in? Oh, it's just that final pass. That hasn't been there a couple of times. A couple of decent half chances we've had in that final ball. That final pass just has been so poor since we came in and jumped into this game. Now here's Gooch. Try and find your man. One more time. And again to French. If he can get there first, it is French. Surely get one back. There we go. 2 1. We'll take it. French gets another to his name, to his tally, should I say, for this season. Well, that should be the last kick of the game. 2 1. Really, really difficult game. It just shows the. The class that is around in this league. Our first defeat of the season. So this is how the league table looks at the end of the episode. So we are currently in fifth. It hasn't been a bad start whatsoever to the season. Winning two out of those three and losing one, of course, as well. With Sheffield United, uh, Stoke and Preston all winning their opening three games of the season. Of course, it's only been three games played, but we will have a look at the bottom anyway. Uh, Barnsley, QPR and Peterborough all losing their opening three games of the season. So guys, as we mentioned earlier, we have... 
around two million, just over two million to spend still. Uh, do you think? I just thought then, shall we still try and save up a bit of money, try and bring in Sissoko, or shall I spend some of that money to send out a couple of scouts back out and try and actually uh, specifically ask for central minded midfielders? Let me know in the comments down below but if you have enjoyed this episode please hit the like button for me it'd be massively massively appreciated and subscribe to the channel if you're not already to become a fully fledged member of the sony army but for now you take care and stay jamming